welcome to the Gaia update for the Aries new moon that's happening on Friday, April 5th, 2019. I'm Adrian Elise. Well, this Aries new moon, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It represents a new beginning. It's like conception. It's the seed sprouting. And so this Aries new moon, especially coming on the heels of this intense Mercury retrograde in Pisces, is speaking to a fresh start available for us. And so as we look at what's happening in the sky, this can help us understand what's trying to happen within our psyche. So this new moon happens on April 5th and all the way up to that day for two whole weeks, Mercury and Neptune have been very close together, exact uh, almost for that whole period of time. Mercury typically passes right over Neptune, it just happens in a day or two. And to have two weeks of Mercury conjunct Neptune we are having a complete shift in our reality, our spiritual reality, our connection from this conceptual, small, manifested 3D reality world to the bigger truth of who we are and where we came from and what's the bigger truth of our whole cosmos. So that's the energy of Neptune and Pisces, this big oneness principle, and then Mercury is our everyday understanding. So we're actually, it's a very confusing time and it's a very unsettling time for a lot of people who are trying to figure out what to do and where to go in their life. But it's also a very beautiful time because it's like a mesh and a joining like we haven't had before, right? The stars, as they come, it's not that, they're, that we're necessarily um, being affected by these patterns in the stars. The stars' patterns are telling us what's happening within us what's going on in our cosmic weather, right? And helping us understand and take advantage of what's going on. So this Aries new moon is a fresh start in our conceptual reality of who we really are and what we're really doing here on the planet. We need this, right? I mean, we are so stuck in the lower confines of lower vibrational um, reality that's been created for us through programming to keep us small and to keep us out of touch, to keep us in that illusion of separation from who we really are as God particles. And so there's this Aries new moon is offers an opportunity to literally step over that line of the life that the small, confined, narrow existence you've been living into the wider, more beautiful existence that's available to you. This is why we've been going through this intense time, the 2018 retrograde <laughs> craziness and then this Mercury retrograde at the second part of Pisces. It's really intense because we've got to resolve these patterns of the past to allow ourselves to step into the new chapter and it's starting now. We're not going to get a whole bunch of clarity and understanding about what's been going on for us until Mercury comes out of its retrograde shadow in mid-April. But the energy is moving in new directions. So we've got forward motion, but not necessarily clarity yet, but that will start coming in after this new moon. So this new moon is an opportunity to completely recalibrate our system to that new energy and whatever that is, right? So, but we don't, with Mercury Neptune conjunction, it's saying you don't really get to know, right? It's like, we've got to reach out to our highest self and allow the wisdom of that future self guide our way right now. Uh, we have to get out of our little ego construct and our little brain that says, I need to figure it out and I need to know exactly what's going on and I don't know, what do I do, what do I do and how do I prove that I'm worthy and how do I this, right? So these types of issues are coming up uh, in this period of time because Venus is now in the sign of Pisces along with Mercury and that Mercury-Neptune conjunction. And Venus in Pisces is a beautiful energy of appreciating art and beauty and creativity and peace but there's also issues coming up from the past around programming of our self-worth, right? So the illusion of separation is defined by the concept that we are separate from God and separate from source and separate from creator. And yet that energy that, may, that makes worlds, 
that's everything of energy is what we're made out of. So by definition, and, and quantum physics has proven this to be true, we have access to the God principle within our own being. Okay? But when you can be told that, you can be proven that, you can talk about it all day long, right? But if you don't feel like you deserve God, creator, source in your life, then you're never going to have it. And this is the Venus, this old Venus Pisces stuff. It's the feminine in all of us that's been so persecuted and beaten down. And in that illusion of separation. You know, these are these souls, these light worker souls, crystal seed souls, indigo souls that have come to this into this earth evolution so excited to bring their light and bring their healing and be a part of this shift at uh, spiritual ascension and awakening and then being persecuted told they're the devil burned at the stake you know tortured killed and having to uh as sensitive sensitive souls work through all that rejected from the earth you know rejected in their healing and their love and their light and so that's this Venus and Pisces energy coming up right now where it's like, are you sure you're good enough? Do you deserve it? What do you need to prove, do to prove that you're worthy of God's love? You know, and are you working hard enough? Are you sacrificing? Are you enough of a martyr? Right. You know, and um, these issues are coming up huge, especially for healer souls where they are you know, have fallen into the distortions of the Christ mythology that is resonant with the Pisces energy that says that you need to sacrifice. You're here to sacrifice for other people. You're here to be a martyr and take on the pain of the collective. If we take on the pain of other people in the collective, how are they going to use that pain to grow? And so it's, we're coming to a place where we cannot move forward without a major shift in our conceptual reality. That's that Mercury retrograde in Pisces and a major shift in these patterns and belief system patterns. Because the truth here is that you are responsible. So light workers in general feel responsible, right? This is karma from Atlantean time, maybe pre-planetary evolution, Egyptian, there's uh, all kinds of programming in the past that makes these souls feel personally responsible for the pain that other people feel around them. Like they need to fix it and heal it. It's up to them. And um, the truth is that your responsibility is actually all you have control over is your own self, your own autonomous self and your connection to source. And can you help them by being in that place, you know, by leading the way instead of trying to do it for them and take it on? And, um, you know, that just brings us down to that level. And, and then we're stuck in that lower vibrational frequency. And so a lot of what's coming up for people is these loyalty contracts to your family members, your lineage, to groups of people, maybe people you don't even know. It could be big groups of people that you don't even know or humanity in general. And it says that you can't go into higher vibration. I mean, who are you to just go be happy while all these other people are suffering on the earth, right? And yet, how can you continue to be in these lower vibrations are killing you? And so it's, it's like game over kind of energy. And the only, your only responsibility and the only thing you have control over is you and your own connection to source. And when you're in your ideal and you're in that connection, then what you, what's best for you is also best for everybody around you. And that energy can bring us out of those distortion patterns of the Christ mythology that have plagued these, and particularly the indigo souls, in this feeling of responsibility for everybody else. And it's like you actually are not responsible because that's outside of yourself. And can you work on the issues of the world here in your heart? And can you heal and um solve the problems of the world here and in you know clearing these conceptual realities allowing yourself to have the higher vibration because the only way you really get to bring other souls with you and to heal them is to demonstrate it's possible and yet you have no permission to be in the higher vibrational frequencies 
So it's kind of like there's a lot of souls out there struggling and being like, oh, it's so heavy, it's so this, it's so that. But we've got to examine these loyalty contracts and how we feel like we don't deserve. Like if you go and be happy, I mean, people will really literally can get mad at you sometimes. What are you doing being happy? What? Why are you smiling when so much bad stuff is happening in the world? You know, and it's like, oh, there's a lot to work against. But the deal is this Pluto conjunct the South Node that's exact at the end of March and into April. It's about, you can't stay there anymore. It's too uncomfortable. These lower frequency vibrations are too uncomfortable. And you know, this is a created situation, right? We know technology and the vibrational realities of the um, microwave frequencies, the chemtrails, the lower vibrational food vaccinations. Like we've been inundated with poisons you know, to keep our vibration low. But we are actually in charge of our vibration. And um, it's kind of a picture of like, okay, you could block the sun and all the DNA uh, messages and all this enlightenment that's trying to come to us right now. Go ahead and block that sun. And it's like this thing of like, oh, you don't get to, sorry, not for you. <laughs> you know, and it's like, no, the sun is inside of you. All of what's accessible is right here inside. And we have to evolve beyond the programming, beyond the mind control, beyond the chemicals, beyond the poison, and allow that higher frequency vibration to, you know, allow ourselves to vibrate there and show people the way that that's possible. And that, that means your responsibility is to feel good. Can you deal with that? Like, or does that break down your ego consciousness? Like, no, I'm here to feel bad for everybody else, you know? And it's like, no, <laughs> you know? So this is, this is the crux of what's happening in this intense time of finishing up this Mercury retrograde and Mercury still in its shadow. But this Aries new moon is a, a line that we can cross, especially with that message of the Pluto conjunct the South node. It's like, step out, you know? Go ahead, free fall, be the fool. That's the, the fool card in the tarot is um, resonant with the Aries energy. It's like, you know, lighten your load and find that joy and move forward. And if you fall off the cliff, you fall off the cliff. But you, you know, you got to live. You got to uh, be the fool and let your higher self guide you and trust in that now when you're in the lower vibrations and you're trying to surrender you're going to be surrendering to the paradigm and the control and the agenda of the lower frequency vibrations so you got to bring your vibration in alignment with that higher ideal and then you can surrender into trust and that pluto conjunct the south node is demanding this of us and it's actually a really cool energy because this aries new moon is like yep step through take off all of that old baggage and lighten your load, get your animal helper, and go on the journey. Get up back on the quest, right? And what we've been feeling all the way up to this new moon, we've been feeling uh, this Jupiter in conjunct, the north node. And what that means, it's in conjunct is like directly across but one sign over, and it's an adjustment that needs to be made. And so it's talking about this quest, this feeling of being like this wider, bigger purpose, this reason for us to go through all this that we've gone through in this earth evolution and this connection to our wider horizon and the possibilities. That feeling has been real blocked from us. And, uh, you know, that has to do with lifetime after lifetime of being thwarted, being persecuted, being blocked. And the message here from the stars is saying that the adjustment that needs to be made is self-care nurturing, allowing yourself to feel good, knowing you deserve to feel good, and taking the steps you need to take in your life to feel good. What if that's your work? You know, so it's um, a huge shift, but nurturing and self-care, I mean, think about it. If you plant a seed, you don't really need to do anything to it, but you do need to water it. You know, you do need to um, pay attention to it and it will sprout. So this is the time we're watering our seeds and we're waiting um, to move into this new chapter and this new energy and this Aries new moon is, is a big symbol of the new energies that are available to us with Chiron and Aries having moved into Aries and Uranus into Taurus, this next chapter of 
are the generational energies of this evolution, uh, human evolution on this planet Earth. So I hope you can join me for this live activation. We're going to be, it's total renewal and uh, clearing all of this baggage and seeing ourselves step into that ideal, that trust, that connection, and dropping all that programming and illusion of separation and being ready for that wider horizon that lies ahead. So the activation is going to happen on the day before the new moon on Thursday, April 4th. That will be at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. And that means 1 p.m. Pacific time and 4 p.m. on the East Coast. And this is $10. And what we'll talk through the astrology, create a sacred space, and move into a guided meditation and healings and clearings and connection, of course, always available to our soul groups. Um, moving stuff out of the way, right? It's a time to move some stuff with this Aries energy. Mars is the ruler of Aries and uh, Mars is in our chart. It's like where we want to see action happen in the world. Our, this is our male part of ourselves and it's like, oh, move the furniture, right? Like move it, see the change, <laughs> you know? So Mars can be impatient and frustrated, but we can use that energy to actually move this old luggage, you know, and that we're kind of walking around, you know, in our life instead of just getting it the heck out of there, right? So uh, I hope you can join me for that live activation, and I will see you then or next time for the next update. So until then, I'm Adrian Elise. Namaste.